have this metric of it, so I'm going to go quickly through it. Uh, so we tried to test for copy number variations in, in the people genome before uh, the fetus is born. And uh, generally, uh, the most common abnormalities are anopoides, which involve all chromo uh, chromosomes. The most common one is Down syndrome, and there's a duplication of uh, chromosome 21, but also other whole chromosome fields happen. Uh, but uh, also uh, important are micro deletions uh, that, that are syn synchromatic, uh, like uh, and causing, for example, Rigu shot, D George, and so on. Uh, these are much shorter, but their phenotype you know, might be uh, also rather severe, or is it uh, rather severe? Uh, but the size of that event is much shorter. It's on an order of several megabases compared to all kinds of normal events that are, like, for example, for a thousand plant one, it's like a megabases. So it's much harder to detect. Uh, so, uh, so far, uh, People being mostly relying on invasive methods uh, where they could obtain directly the uh, pure fetal DNA uh, by taking either the samples from unlaid fluid or from the placenta cells. Uh, but these methods are not 100% safe, even though they provide us with, with pure uh, fetal DNA and enable for, for uh, diagnostic quality tests. Uh, recently, there has been a shift uh, or uh, a lot of research in area of non invasive methods that try to uh, go for more like screening methods that are maybe not like diagnostic quality, but they pose no risk and, and should be uh, safe and cheap. Uh, so it's based on the fact that uh, maternal blood plasma contains also fragments of uh, fetal DNA uh, that are a uh, side product of, of cell apoptosis of uh, cells in placenta that contain fetal DNA. And, uh, between 10 to 20 weeks of pregnancy, this can build up to 5 to 15 percent of, of the DNA content that is in the in, in the plasma. So this is, we are talking about short fragments that are floating in the in the in the plasma. It's cell-free DNA. So it's you can think of it as, as kind of DNA garbage in the in the, in the plasma. Uh, so uh, the first methods came out in 2008. Uh, to test for, for trisomy 21. Uh, both these methods rely on uh, relatively low calic sequencing and then read counting. Uh, these kind of methods have been then further uh, uh, perfected and so on. But generally, the idea of most of these methods is, is uh, similar to, uh, to uh, standard CNV coding, uh, where you sequence the cell free DNA in the plasma to align the reads to reference genome. And uh, let's say this read fragments here are, are the fetal uh, genome, are from, from, from the genome. Uh, and if there is a duplication, we're going to see uh, a locally increase in coverage in that region. But uh, since the, the fetal content is only 5 to 15%, this increase is very slight. So you need to look at a lot of unaffected controls to establish uh, the, uh, the statistical significance of, of the observation you see. Uh, so this, these are the, the basic idea for, for so-called read, read counting methods. We use this kind of approach, but uh, in addition, uh, we use also something else that we're going to talk about. And uh, then, uh, as I said, there's been a shift towards like short, shorter CMEs, uh, where this read counting can be extended to not looking at whole chromosomes, but looking at bins, or shorter bins. So obviously, you need a little more coverage, uh, but it's, it's, it's possible. Uh, and what we do, we, we add also uh, a, a distribution of SNP alleles. You can look at the, the reads that align at SNP positions that are uh, homozygous, and look at uh, the, the, the ratio of of, uh, of read supporting uh, the, the possible variants, and it's also indicative of, of the copy count as I will show you. So this kind of uh, signal has been used uh, also in other applications, like in, uh, in the cancer subcolon uh, colony identification and so on. So let's see like how it works out in, in this application. So let's say uh, mother is homozygous. 
uh, AA and also and father is over there is BB, then uh, in case of normal inheritance, the fetus will always have uh, one copy from mother, one copy from father, so it's going to be heterozygous AB. And then in plasma, assuming 10% admixture, there is going to be 90% of the people uh, of the maternal background, which is just AA, and uh, the rest, uh, the 10% coming from the fetus, half will support B and half will support A. Uh, so the expected ratio, if if we know the maternal and and, uh, and paternal and haplotype, uh, we can estimate the, the ratio that we, we uh, expect to see in, in the plasma in case of normal inheritance. And in case of trisomy, when there's additional copy, let's say from mother, so there's BAA, uh, also the local admixture changes because there's an additional copy, but uh, also the expected ratio then uh, changes from 95 to 5 to 105 because there is an additional copy supporting A. And if there was uh, trisomy coming from father, then there would be additional copy that would support variant B. So the, the expected ratio would be 95 to 10. And as you can see, like in this particular setting, the, the change in the ratio is quite slight. Uh, and you would need a, a really high coverage to, to be able to distinguish this, uh, which is downside of this method, but uh, to like, uh, cope with that, we, what we do, we can uh, we try to look at multiple SNPs uh, together and not at SNPs in isolation. Uh, but for that, we need to face uh, the, the haplotypes. So we assume that we have the maternal and paternal uh, genotype that we pseudo phase using uh, reference panels and uh, and Gigo4 uh, to get uh, the, um, the, the pseudo phasing. And then we can look at the, the SNPs uh, in, in, uh, in some sort of connection and uh, and uh, model what haplotypes the fetus inherited uh, in, in like explicit manner. Uh, so how our method, like the overview of how our method works, is that we split the genome into windows that are non-overlapping, and each contains one SNP. Uh, and in each of these windows, we look at the, the, this, uh, this imbalance of allelic ratios, uh, which we can like, com uh, I'll get to that. And also we uh, look at the number of reads uh, to, uh, as, as the second type of signal to see whether there's, uh, that there's something indicative of deletion or, or duplication in that region just based on the number of, uh, of, of reads mapped to that region. Uh, and uh, then we, we face the, the nearby SNPs. Uh, and we model this uh, as, a, as a hidden market model where uh, the observations are emissions, uh, which are the, uh, the ratios of the uh, individual variants at those SNP positions. And individual states are the, the types of inheritance which model explicitly what, uh, uh, what maternal and, and uh, paternal uh, haplotypes the fetus inherited. And based on that, we can always compute the expected ratio and evaluate what's the, uh, what's the likelihood of the, of the observed data given, given that assumption. So we model five uh, types of inheritance, uh, normal inheritance, and then deletion or duplication from maternal or paternal side. Uh, for each class, uh, the, as I said, the, the, uh, the model all the possible uh, haplotypes the fetus might in, in inherit to, to have uh, in, in that individual class. So uh, the, no the normal inheritance is central to the, to the state states, and uh, then uh, there are transitions to either division, uh, paternal uh, division, uh, maternal multiplication, maternal multiplication, or paternal multiplication, and then each of that it is that just cloud where we model like the actual uh, haplotype inheritance, where the transitions correspond to uh, recombinations or, or errors in the in the pseudo phasing. Uh, okay, so the emission distribution, as I said, it's uh, you can based on the, the expected uh, inheritance. 
uh, well, based on the model, you can compute the expected uh, distribution uh, to see and, and evaluate the probability. And then transitions are uh, set uh, on, on, on like prior knowledge that we don't expect to see CNVs too often. And uh, there we multiply in the, uh, the uh, prior that we get from, from the uh, reads. Uh, so if we see that there's a higher chance of, of duplication in this window, we will increase the probability of, of, of transition to, to duplication or, or staying in duplication and so on. Uh, we're going to go this. Uh, yeah, and then we run uh, with our difficulty to, to get the most like, uh, likely uh, inheritance for all, all the, the, the region and economy. Okay, so uh, let me just quickly go through the experiments. We don't have uh, actual real data set. We took a real data set into which we simulated the CNVs uh, using uh, adding uh, reads from mother or, or from, from father. Uh, and we use uh, a plasma where we had uh, fairly average uh, DLC of 78 and uh, the people are being sure of 30%. So we simulated a bunch of CNVs, and in short, uh, for for CNVs that are of size roughly three megabases and more, we achieve a close to 100 uh, percent recall and precision, uh, and then the method tends to deteriorate. While the uh, maternal conditions are, are the hardest to, to get, uh, which is obvious because given the maternal background, and uh, I can I guess skip this and go to the summary. So in our method, we, we combine multiple types of signal for this prenatal uh, CME detection, uh, which is the other distributions, uh, then the phasing, and also the number of reads along to the individual regions in the genome. And uh, in our in silico simulations, we, we achieve a high accuracy for, for CNVs that are uh, uh, mainly like a couple megabases, and uh, for well, for like half megabase, we still get the reasonable results. As you saw, but uh, it's uh, it's far from going close to 100 percent for this kind of application. Okay, I would like to acknowledge my Elijah, Mike Rudno, and uh, Aaron Arbabi, uh, with whom uh, I worked on this this project. Thank you very much. I guess we'll take a couple of questions. Um, what happens if you downsample the sort of data that you have from the 78x down to say something a little more reasonable, like 30x for all genome sequences? Uh, uh, we downsample it also to 40 and 20 x simply. And uh, obviously, the results are slightly worse, but it doesn't vary that much. Like around 40, you, it's 40, 50, it's I think the, the spot where also companies uh, are, like they usually sequence to that, that, that. Uh, so, you know, my answer is that, that for the 40x? Sorry? What was the precision that we called for the 40x? Uh, for, the, for the long CMEs, for like around 5 to 10 megabases, there was no change, it was 100%. And uh, then uh, it went down to like between the megabases for, for like around Three, three. Any other questions? Thank you.